Hello, this is Trilok. I'm a dietitian. In the last two videos, we discussed heart disease and cholesterol. In today's video, we are going to talk about cooking oils, one of the most confusing topics in nutrition today. Before we get into much detail, let's have a brief look at our history of oil consumption. Commercial refined oils were not part of our daily Indian cooking before the 1960s. People mostly used mustard oil, groundnut oil, sesame oil, which has medicinal properties, and coconut oil, especially in the coastal areas. Ghee and butter were used only as a flavor booster, never in excess on a daily basis. Heart disease was rare at the time because oil intake was low, oils were not reused, diets were fiber rich and people were physically active and there were no ultra processed snacks and no repeat deep frying culture. So simply they didn't overdo fats. Now let's look at what has changed. The per capita edible oil consumption in India has risen sharply from the 1960s to 2020. In the 1950s and 60s, an average Indian consumed just 2 to 3 kilos of oil in one entire year. Today, we consume almost 20 kilos per person per year. This massive explosion in oil intake happened within a single lifetime. And this rise clearly parallels the surge in heart disease, type 2 diabetes, abdominal obesity and fatty liver. Not because oil is poison, but because the quantity changed, we use refined oils, we overheat them, and sometimes we reuse them. So, how much fat does our body actually need? According to the WHO and ICMR, total fat from all sources combined should be about 44 to 66 grams per day. From cooking oils specifically, we only need 15 to 25 grams per day. If we calculate this for an entire year, it comes to just 7 to 9 kilos per person per year. But today, on average, we are consuming nearly 20 kilos per year. So here is the most important truth you must remember. Irrespective of whether an oil is healthy or not, excess consumption will always lead to weight gain, fatty liver, high cholesterol and heart disease. All oils, whether it is olive oil, coconut oil, mustard oil or ghee, they are all 100% fat. They give 9 calories per gram and any excess is efficiently stored as body fat. Now comes the big question. Which oils should you avoid? Which oils should you limit? And which oils should you prefer? Oils and fats to avoid. First, vanaspati or hydrogenated fat. They contain man-made trans fats which rise LDL and lower HDL and directly damages your arteries. Second, avoid reused and overheated oil. These oils contain toxic aldehydes which are strongly linked to heart disease, fatty liver and even cancer. Third, packaged snacks and bakery fats contain hidden trans fats and refined oils. They are extremely calorie dense. Avoid daily intake, have them only occasionally. Oils and fats to limit. These are not poison, but they must be used in strictly controlled amounts. First, coconut oil. It is very high in saturated fat. It is good for high heat cooking, but in small quantities only. It is not ideal for people with heart disease, high LDL or fatty liver. Second, butter, ghee, malai and cream. Use them only for tadka, occasionally for the flavor or festive foods, not for daily use. Third, Sunflower, soybean and corn oil. These oils are not bad by default. They are simply very sensitive to heat and oxidation. They are best used for light sauteing, soft vegetable cooking and once in a while festival frying like pakodas or puris. But they are not ideal for regular frying or repeated use. Fourth, cheese and mayonnaise. They contain fat, salt and very high calories. They are extremely addictive. Take them only occasionally. Now, let's come to the oils that are safest for regular Indian cooking. First, groundnut oil, heat stable and ideal for daily cooking, traditionally used in South Indian cooking. Second, mustard oil, also rich in monounsaturated fats and antioxidants, traditionally used in North Indian cooking and tadka. Third, sesame oil, contains sesamol with antioxidant and anti-inflammatory benefits. Fourth, rice bran oil but only in moderation. It has a good balance of fats and can help cholesterol when not overheated. Fifth is extra virgin olive oil, anti-inflammatory and heart friendly, 
best for salads, low heat cooking or drizzling after cooking, not suitable for high heat frying. Nuts and seeds as fat sources. These provide fat, fiber, minerals and antioxidants. But one very important reminder, if you have a known nut or seed allergy, strictly avoid them and consult your doctor before using them. Now let's look at the calorie reality. Most nuts have around 600 calories per 100 grams and most seeds also have 500 calories or more per 100 grams. So it's very easy to overshoot your daily calories if you're not careful with the quantities. Your regular diet already gives you 30 to 40 grams of natural fat from foods like dal, milk, grains, nuts and seeds. What you need to add on top of this is only 3 to 5 teaspoons or 25 ml max of visible oil per person per day. I know this seems very low but this is exactly the reason why so many people struggle with obesity, high cholesterol and fatty liver. One good practice is to rotate 2-3 to three oils throughout the month. For example, use groundnut oil for 2 weeks, mustard and sesame for the 3rd and 4th week and keep rice bran or olive oil for low heat cooking. This gives your body a healthier mix of fats instead of overloading with just one oil. And remember, no oil is safe in huge quantities. I hope this video helped you understand cooking oils and how to choose the right variety and the quantity for your needs. Thank you for watching Nutritional Perspective. I'll see you in the next video.